welcome to the next lecture on software engineering in this lecture we are going to talk about part 1 of module 1 of the software engineering that is introduction to software engineering so what are the learning objectives to know about the evolving role of software to be able to define software engineering to know about the legacy softwares and to understand the software makeup so let us start introduction to software we will talk about some of the questions and try to answer these questions so first question is what is it that is what do you mean by software or software engineering so in general if we talk about software computer software encompasses programs that execute within a computer with proper documentation so one of the important thing is that documentation must be there okay now coming on to the software engineering it encompasses a process okay a collection of methods and an array of tools that allow professionals to build high quality computer softwares okay so nothing but processes are there collection of methods are there an array of tools which provide professional to build a high quality software now the second question is who does it as we all know software professionals that is software engineers build the software and then support also okay so software developer or software engineers does it next question is why is it important so as we all know it affects nearly every aspects of our lives okay so software engineering enables us to build complex systems in a timely manner and with high quality to solve what real life problems okay next is what are the steps so as we are talking about software engineering so applying software engineering approach the softwares are built to meet the needs of customers so ultimately we are going to see the approach of software engineering next question what is the work product we are going to see different views for this like from point of view of a software engineer we can say that the set of programs or content content that is data and other work products that are computer software so from the point of view software engineering uh, engineers the work product is nothing but the computer software okay and when we see from the point of view of user we can say that the resultant information okay that somehow makes the users world better is the work product okay so basically we have tried to answer some of the questions in this regard that what exactly is the computer software or computer software engineering who performs it who does it why is it important what are the steps in this we have seen that the approach of software engineering is going to be applied and what are the work product from the point of view of software engineer and from the point of view of an user okay now coming on to the nature of the software okay 
the first point talks about software is both a product and a vehicle that delivers a product now it itself is a product and also a vehicle that delivers the product so if we see software as a product it delivers the computing potential and this computing potential is embodied by the computer hardware or we can say more broadly by a network of computers that are accessible by local hardware okay so we can see that software is a information transformer how it produces manages acquires modifies displays or transmits the information that can be as simple as a single bit or as complex as a multimedia presentation so as a product when we talk of software we are seeing it as an information transformer fine but when we talk about as a vehicle it is used to deliver the product how we are seeing that and why we are saying that software acts as the basis for the control of computer if we talk about operating system you can easily see visualize then the communication of information like networks and the creation and control of other programs like software tools so these are used to deliver a product to develop a software okay so software is both a product and a vehicle that delivers a product okay next point is over the last half century the role of computer software has undergone significant change why this happened just see in the hardware performance improvements are there computing architectures there are changes in memory and storage capacity there is a vast increase and you have seen a variety of input and output options and all have precipitated more sophisticated and complex computer based system so over the years you have seen the evolving nature of all the computing facilities which have resulted in the change of the role of computer software okay now coming on to the definition of software just see software is instructions that is computer programs that when executed provide desired features functions and performance so ultimately computer programs are used for what providing desired features function and performance second part talks about data structures that enable the programs to adequate adequately manipulate the information so ultimately lots of data is there how to manage how to manipulate that for that we need certain data structures so it is data structures also and the last but not the least third part talks about descriptive information in both hard copy and virtual forms that describes the operation and the use of the programs so ultimately this is what we are talking about proper documentation okay so we can summarize that collection of programs data structures with proper documentation for performing certain desired features functions and performance and to manipulate the information okay next is the difference between software and hardware how software is different from hardware so let us talk the first difference talks about software is developed or engineered it is not manufactured in the classical sense let us understand in both the activities when we talk about hardware uh, manufacturing or software development or engineering so high quality is achieved through the good design okay let us understand 
this but the manufacturing phase for hardware can introduce some quality problems okay so manufacturing phase can introduce some quality problems that are non existence or easily corrected for software fine so software costs are concentrated in this step that is in engineering this means that software projects cannot be managed as if they were manufacturing projects so software is developed or engineered it is not manufactured as hardware are done okay next point software doesn't wear out the most important thing as we can see for hardware what happens exactly let us understand the failure rate curve for hardware okay here failure rate is there and time and we are talking about hardware failure rate curve for hardware we can see curve as the bar term here we are talking about infant mortality the relationship uh, that we have shown is often called a bar tub curve okay so you can see higher failure rate has been shown in the beginning uh, like uh, even we start manufacturing the hardware it may happen that the failure rate is very high because defects uh, due to high rate of defect design fault and all those things but as the time goes on the defects are corrected and failure rate drops as you can see here and it reaches to a steady state fine but after some time what happens suffering from the cumulative effects of Uh, natural things that is dust or vibration abuse or temperature extremes and other uh, many environmental problems uh, its failure rate again rises and at this point the hardware wear out okay but this is not true for software in general when we talk about curve for software the failure rate curve here failure rate is there and here time so if we talk about software initially design defects may be there but idealized in idealized way we can see that this curve should be like this that initial higher failure rate but at the later part it should be like this okay but exactly what happens changes are introduced okay so what happens suppose change has been introduced at this place so what happens again the failure rate may rise again changes are introduced rise in failure rate again in this way this goes on so increased failure rate due to the side effects of change okay so this is the actual curve but you can see that the software doesn't wear out as the hardware okay so this way we can say that uh, software doesn't wear out okay third point talks about although the industry is moving toward component based construction most software continues to be custom built okay 
in the hardware world component reuse is a natural part of the engineering process but when we talk about in software world it has only begun to achieve on a broad scale so most software continues to be custom built okay so in this way hardware is different from the software okay now coming on to the software applications domain the first part is system software okay so system softwares are what collection of programs written to service other programs so these service other programs for example compilers editors file management utilities operating system components drivers networking software all those are part of system software okay so this area is characterized by heavy interaction with the computer hardware so we are talking about system software so heavy interaction is done with computer hardware heavy uses by the multiple users simultaneously many users are going to handle this concurrent operations so we required scheduling resource sharing complex data structures and multiple external interfaces so ultimately so system softwares are built to service other programs okay next one is application software okay so application as the name itself suggests consist of a standalone programs that solve a specific business need for example point of sale of transaction okay next one is engineering or scientific software so it ranges from the astronomy to volcanology molecular biology to automated manufacturing computer added design system simulations these are all evolving and trying to solve some engineering problems okay next one is embedded softwares so what exactly embedded software does these resides within a product or system that is used to implement the control features and functions for the end user and for the system itself for example you can see the automated washing machine automatic uh, photo printer all those are having certain embedded softwares okay next one is product line softwares so these are designed to provide a specific capability for use by many different customers product line software can focus on a limited and historic marketplace okay for example inventory control products or address mass customer consumer markets for example word processing and all those things okay next web applications so web apps span a wide array of applications in their simplest form web apps can be little more than a set of linked hypertext files that present information using text and limited graphics okay so uh, the application that are served through web okay next is artificial intelligence software when we talk about artificial intelligence the normal human intelligence is replaced by some artificial means like robotics okay expert systems pattern recognition like voice recognition or image recognition artificial neural networks all these softwares are going to serve that okay next one is open world computing when we talk about open world computing it means we are talking about open source okay now coming on to the legacy software what exactly we mean by legacy software so these are nothing but the system that were developed decades ago and have been continuing uh, continually modified to meet the changes in business requirements and computing platforms the proliferation of such system is causing headaches for large organization who find them costly to maintain and risky to work but they are continuously being used because they solve the business needs okay so they were developed decades ago but have been 
continually modified for the current use okay now what are the basic characteristics if we talk about legacy software the important term is the poor quality because we are comparing with the modern software parameters okay at that time when the legacy softwares were developed definitely they were of good quality that's why they have been developed but the basic characteristic that we associate with the legacy software are longevity business criticality and pure quality because of inextensible designs convoluted codes or when we talk about documentation it uh, either it is a poorly documented or a non-existent documentation test cases and results that were never archived and a poorly managed change history so these are associated with the legacy software okay now coming on to the software myths we have certain types of myths that is management myths customer myths practitioner myths okay let us go one by one what exactly we mean by management myths so let us go through the management myths first one is the first myth talks about we already have a book that's full of standards fine and procedures for building software won't that provide my people with everything they need to know the answer is no because the book may exist but is that being used or is it complying to the current standard or is it adaptable all those things are going to create some question in the mind okay so first management myth is yes next if we get behind schedule we can add more programmers and catch up sometimes called mongolian hot concept okay so we have to remember that the software development is not a mechanistic process like manufacturing in which we add more people and get the work done so here it is not going to help you out okay next if i decide to outsource the software project to a third party i can just relax and let that firm build it so what do you think if we talk about this myth the answer is simple if an organization does not understand how to manage and control software projects internally it will invariably struggle when it outsources software projects okay so this is not going to happen okay now coming on to the customer myths a general statement of objectives is sufficient to begin writing programs we can fill in the details later for quality product a general statement of objective is not going to serve the purpose okay software requirements continually change but change can be easily accommodated because software is flexible definitely software is flexible but if we continuously try to change the impact can be disastrous okay so we have to request the change as early as possible to get the quality product okay now practitioner myths once we write the program and get it to work our job is done if we talk about uh, from the point of uh, industry the thing is that sooner we write the program uh, the longer it will take you to get it done okay industry data indicate that between 60 and 80% of all effort expended on software will be expended after it delivered to the customer for the first time okay so this myth is there until i get the program running i have no way of accessing its quality okay one of the most effective software quality assurance mechanism can be applied from the inception of a project the formal technical review software reviews are a quality filler 
that have been found to be more effective than testing for finding certain classes of software area okay so reality is that the only deliverable work product for a successful project is the working program a working program is only one part of software configuration that includes many elements documentation is also there to which provides the foundation for successful engineering and more importantly guidance for software support so reality is that okay next software engineering will make us create voluminous and unnecessary documentation and will invariably slow us down this is not true certainly not true because it is about creating quality better quality leads to reduced rework and reduced rework results in faster delivery times slow uh, software engineering principles are very much important for making a good quality product okay so these are the references Thank you for watching.